Good morning. My name is Stan Forzik. I'm on the advisory board for uh, the Coalition for a National Infrastructure Bank. For those who are not familiar with the Coalition for National Infrastructure Bank, we are a grassroots uh, initiative that is supporting uh, bills that are in a bill in Congress that is for the creation of a national infrastructure bank, the nation's fifth national infrastructure bank. I have brought a colleague along with me who is the economist for the coalition, and she will provide all the necessary background information and details on what's in the bill and what the, the uh, legislation will cover insofar as the bank is concerned. Myself, I just want to talk for a few moments to get you prepared for that uh, presentation and talk about two uh, distinct issues regarding banking initiatives and funding for infrastructure. And the first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, community-based uh, uh, funding or, or uh, applications for funding. And what that means is very simply this, We've seen that different laws go into place to provide funding for infrastructure. It's not enough money. We all know that. That's why we're here talking about things. But everything is based on what goes on within a community. The National Infrastructure Bank, when it's up and running, will be a platform that will allow the internal workings of the bank to have an origination and engineering section that will take in applications for different projects on a community-based issue. That community could be a municipality, a city, a state, an authority, or anything else. But it will be done on that local level so that we can see all of the necessary components of the project and ensure that all components are dealt with and are part of the project. Because if they're not, then it's not going to be a worthwhile project and it will fall flat on its face. We don't want municipalities or cities to fall flat on their face. We want to improve the infrastructure across the country. Nobody's going to fail because we're not going to let them fail. That's what this bank is supposed to do. That's what the other banks prior to this did. And that is what this bank is going to do. The second point I'd really like to make is the issue of critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure, the way we're looking at it, is the background support and security for those projects that need to be controlled uh, within a digital environment, uh, a cloud environment, or something along those lines. We live in a country and a world today that is constantly being bombarded by other areas, trying to fool the system, we'll call it, or fake what's going on. We need to protect everything we've got. And the only way to protect it is to be able to have critical infrastructure backing up everything that we're talking about. We've all seen water systems where someone has hacked in and changed the formulas for the water. We've seen different people do di a, a, a different organizations come in and change different things in the digitized world to protect different things. We've seen trains that could not stop on time or were not sent signals. Uh, to uh, from their wheelboxes to say that there's too much heat and it causes a derailment. So we want to make sure that the critical infrastructure is a part of everything. And I fall back on my original discussion, which was when an application is made to the National Infrastructure Bank, it doesn't automatically get approved. It has to be researched. It has to be reviewed. It has to meet the codes. It has to mean that everything that's out there within that project is getting done for the benefit of that authority, that community, that at whatever level city is putting in that application is going to get done and it's gonna get done properly. 
with those two points said, and, and let me also add one other thing regarding the, the Coalition for National Infrastructure Bank. We're a grassroots effort. And we've been doing this for the last several years. We support what you folks are doing, and we hope that you'll support us in our efforts to get this legislation approved. Now, I would like to turn this over to my colleague, Alfeka Mutardi, who is the, major, the, the head economist for the Coalition for National Infrastructure Bank. She is the financial brains of the National Infrastructure Bank. She's the one who has wrote the bills, who understands the bills and knows every word that's in there so that the Congress will understand what it's approving. With that, Alfeka, take it away. Thank you very much, Stan, for that wonderful introduction. And my greetings and good morning to all of you on the panel to talk about how we can finance infrastructure and make sure that it is resilient. So I do have a few slides to show you, and I would like today to walk you through um, a proposal for creating a national infrastructure bank that will not only fund all of our backlog of infrastructure, but it'll build resiliency along the way. We have a bill in Congress. It, uh, the old number for the bill that's being reintroduced was HR 3339. What the bill does is it creates a $5 trillion public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all across the country. This NIB works without a need for new federal spending, taxes, or debt on our website, nibcoalition.com. If you're interested, you can see some videos on actually how the bank works. But the big feature about it that I wanted to point out to you is that it is sized to cover all of the unmet infrastructure needs in every single county and city in America. And one of the reasons that lo uh, low income areas or poorer jurisdictions can't build resistance resiliency into their systems is because they don't have the financial resources to do it. And this bill will lend for that. The bill's actual language requires resiliency. It is fully costed and provides effective solutions also to reduce CO2 emissions while it's working on the resiliency. And it'll train up workers too, to do our 21st century construction jobs. So what does this N NIB cover? It covers $5 trillion in projects, uh, and it provides additional money above and beyond what budgets, state and local budgets, federal budgets, uh, public-private partnerships, bond markets, uh, even the bipartisan law that we passed uh, last year, over a year ago, it tops up all of that money to be able to finance everything. And so it has adequate provisions in it to repair all of the transportation systems, all of the nation's water systems, upgrade the electric power grid. And then we added some categories we also think are critical for our nation's development, high-speed rail network everywhere, broadband, rural, urban, affordable, affordable housing, and some large-scale water projects to address drought in the Southwest where we grow half of our nation's food supply. So what are the factors that are impacting infrastructure resilience and why is it such a challenge to build up for that? Well, first of all, we've had a lot of climate change. It's caused record droughts, flooding, storms, wildfires, and heat. All of that has adversely impacted our stock of standing public infrastructure. Then, as Stan mentioned, we have the problem of cyber security and physical security at our infrastructure sites. We've had examples of electricity substations vandalized and water utility operating systems attacked. And we also have problems with computer chips uh, in imported equipment uh, coming from overseas, including electric transformers, for example. But there are other aspects to uh, our resiliency that we have to keep mind, be mindful of. First of all, we have an aging and low capacity infrastructure. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave the whole 16 categories a C minus grade in their latest report card. They say we need 2.6 trillion over 10 years just to bring it up to a state of good repair. And then if we want to make it resilient, we're gonna to have to add in a little bit more. 
Of course, our bridges and roads are in poor condition and congested and our water and electric grids are maxed out. And then we also need to make sure that we have a pipeline of trained workers to work on our infrastructure. We had a tight labor market last year with a lot of labor churn, uh, and we have a lot of seasoned retire, uh, workers that are retiring from water utilities and things like that. So the training of workers is something we'll need to work on. Here's just one example in this picture of a resiliency problem, and that is the declining water levels in the Colorado River system. Um, the, the Lake Mead and Lake Powell are about now at 25% capacity. And soon, if things continue like this without any conservation or water use cutbacks, they could even stop producing water and electricity and turn into a dead pool. So conservation won't be enough. We're going to need some really extraordinary measures to bring import water into these areas and uh, build more resiliency into the Colorado River system. What what, uh, what we have in the National Infrastructure Bank bill is actual requirements in the statute to build this resistance, this resiliency and security. For example, the statute says uh, that projects must use state of the art technologies to achieve project reliability, efficiency, resiliency, sustainability, security, and public safety. We hope that that covers everything, uh, but we wanna keep track also of public health, greenhouse gases, uh, design construction that are the best uh, and af most affordable for projects and incorporate uh, tech science and technology drivers. Here is an example of what we might build as a resilient system while we're expanding our electric power grid. The challenges for the electric power grid, for example, are that we've had storms and wildfires damaging the electric grid, like the wildfires in Northern California, like the, um, the hurricanes in Louisiana and Florida. In addition, we are reaching maximum capacity on the grid. And if we add electric vehicles, and electrify rail, for example, which, which are other aspects of what infrastructure we want to build, will strain the, the system even more. So we're going to need more capacity on our, tr our transmission and distribution lines and make sure that we're burying lines to protect them and make the whole system more resilient. And the National Infrastructure Bank has enough funding for all of that. Another area that we really need to keep in mind is climate change on account of, of the emission of greenhouse gases uh, all around the world. If you look at it from a big picture point of view, the biggest culprits leading, uh, contributing to this um, greenhouse gas emissions in the United States are the transportation sector and the electricity sector. So if we're going to build new infrastructure, we wanna keep those, uh, those big contributions of CO2 gases in mind, and we wanna minimize any, any um, uh, emissions during construction or with the final equipment. And one way to do that is to insert more rail into our transportation mix so that we could take cars off the road and reduce emissions that way and then build more electric power grid capacity so that we can move renewable energy back and forth. And those are all key ground, key uh, objectives for our bank. So here is an example of what you might specifically do for addressing the power grid, one area. Uh, we have to work on these wildfires that are destroying power lines in Northern California. That would require a big dollop of money to bury the California transmission lines. Another area is uh, uh, Louisiana, which during Hurricane Ida destroyed more power lines at the, in the distribution sector than uh, all four, hot, four or five hurricanes combined. So we need to bury all those lines as well and in, in Florida as well. I, again, the grid is not ready for electric vehicles, uh, despite uh, the, the thrust of the current administration to bring more of those on and to have more generation from renewable power. And our bank would finance a, an electric grid overlay to move renewable energy back and forth across the country. Uh, we want to, um, the, uh, the uh, 
the ASCII, the American Society of Civil Engineers estimates we need 200 billion just to bring the grid up to snuff. And we have extra money for this high voltage lines. The, the bank will be able to cover all that and then build a smart system like the picture that I just showed you earlier. Here's another example of building resiliency. Uh, and that is with regard to sea levees and um, controlling water in heavily flooded areas. Um, the One of the proposals is for uh, Dutch dialogues or communication between the city of New Orleans and the Netherlands, which knows a lot about controlling uh, water and flooding. And we can build those when we build new canal systems and water levees. We're building a, a pro proposal for a new levee system along the Gulf of Mexico to protect the port of Houston and protect the oil refineries exporting. The, the National Infrastructure Bank can provide uh, all of uh, uh, broad plans and financing for all of those kinds of projects. We really want to train workers and bring them into these 21st century jobs. We currently have a bit of a work shortage. There was a study by the Brookings Institute that was talking about rolling out projects from the bipartisan infrastructure law that said, well, we've had a worker shortage and we have uh, about 11 million uh, jobs uh, nationwide that are not even filled yet. A uh, very low uh, uh, level of unemployment. Where would these workers come from? We think that many of them are still in very low paying jobs. Uh, we could replace those low paying jobs, flipping hamburgers with robotics. We can uh, pull working age people back into the workforce who have left. Uh, we have underreported and rising unemployment in some sectors not captured by the statistics. And we have a large tap of group of people that are not tapped uh, and um, being trained for the workforce. Uh, Ex-offenders, ex-military, immigration reform, all these. We need a 21st century education system to pull these workers into these great paying jobs. And your labor unions have told us, if you pay them adequately, then they will come. So a financial, as a the, the fourth, the, the final sector that I wanted to point out that um, really is in need of resiliency is the economy at large. Since I'm a macroeconomist, I really pay attention to this. I'm very concerned, and a lot of economists are, that we'll have a recession in 2023. If there is such a recession, we see um, normal capital um, uh, markets stopping their lending uh, to state and local governments for infrastructure projects just because of the economic downturn. We will lean into that downturn by hiring up any unemployed workers to do these great paying jobs. We'll be lending only for infrastructure. So it's targeted money just for that, building in resiliency. The borrowers would be state and local governments, any county, city uh, that, uh, that owns a road, a bridge, a school could come in directly, uh, as Stan said, at the community level for a project that is exactly what they need. And we'll actually be able to lower inflation this way. How does that work? By increasing productivity, production on the supply side, then with more production, this will bring the prices of goods down to their natural level of the cost of production. This bill is actually passable because it does not require any budgeted new money coming from the budget or extra taxes or deficits or anything like that. So it finally solves the problem. How do we finance public infrastructure without dinging the budget or raising taxes or causing more deficits? So if you're interested in how a national infrastructure bank might work in your community uh, with your operations, if you are a utility, um, if you are a road builder uh, who needs to integrate uh, projects uh, so that we uh, can fix water lines under the road and utilities under the road. At the same time, we fix the road on top with good planning, good engineering, and a backstop uh, engineering group within the bank that can help local areas to build out and design and uh, request loans for these projects, then look on our website, nibcoalition.com, for how you can help. Thank you very much.